Today's review is sponsored by Storyblocks Video. Right now, you are listening to the Rode VideoMic NTG mounted right on top of my camera, which is the way how I think this mic is most commonly going to be used. So I thought I would begin this review by setting some expectations for how it might sound like with a typical setup like this because it can sound quite a bit better when you use it as an overhead boom, probably quite unsurprisingly, but let me just get this out of frame real quick. So this is Rode's latest addition to their extremely well-known video mic lineup, and this sits all the way at the very top of that lineup. In fact, even the name suggests that this is their most premium video mic yet. When you take it off its shock mount, it does look very much like a Rode NTG shotgun mic, especially the Rode NTG5. This is a well-built microphone. The entirety of the external body of the mic, save for the buttons, are made from metal, so the mic's actually got quite a fair bit of density given its size. And of course, one of the most noticeable features of this mic is that infinitely variable stepless gain knob on the back, and that gives you a very fine level of control over your audio levels while recording. The knob also rotates with a bit of weight to it, and it turns incredibly smooth as well. I also thought it was a pretty cool design choice by Rode to pop their signature gold dot in the center on the back of the knob. I just think it's a pretty cool design aesthetic, especially the way it remains unaffected by the knob's turn position. Not really functional by any means, but it's a polished design and I appreciate that. But there is one elephant in the room that I would like to address first, and that is when Rode announced the VideoMic NTG, it almost seems a tad too similar to this. This is the VMic D3 Pro by DD Microphones. It also has a stepless gain knob on the back, and they also share the same shock mounting system, among a few other things. Now, I don't really want to be pointing fingers and say that Rode straight up copied DD's design for the D3 Pro, but the reality is, the VideoMic NTG's design does resemble the D3 Pro a lot. Now, they're not exactly the same, there's some differences in features, but thinking as a user, just to chime in my opinion on this whole Rode copy DD thing, I don't necessarily see the resemblance as really bad news because the D3 Pro was and still is an amazing microphone. So as far as the VideoMic NTG is concerned, maybe not the most exclusive or original in terms of hardware design, but at least it's similar to something that was well designed, and as an end user, that's an additional good product for me to choose from. Now to Rode's credit, there are some nice touches in terms of design on the VideoMic NTG. For example, the volume numbers for the volume control dial on the back are much easier to read when compared to the ones on the D3 Pro, especially from the operator's perspective. There's also these cable management slots down here that I believe also help with shock isolation, and these sliding rails on the cold shoe also have a nice amount of dampening to them. But now let's do a quick head-to-head -head sound comparison between the two. So here's the microphones mounted back onto my camera again. You're listening to the Rode VideoMic NTG right now. And this is the DD D3 Pro. This setup is going straight into my EOS R's built-in microphone jack. The input gain is set to minimum on my camera, and the output gain on the D3 Pro is set to a 10, which is maxed out on the microphone. On the VideoMic NTG, I've also set it to a 10, but it can actually go quite a bit higher on the VideoMic NTG, which is up to a 15. And aside from normalizing the volume levels to match the rest of the video, I have not done anything in post to alter the sound. One other thing these two mics have in common is how the output automatically switches between TRRS and TRS. The VideoMic NTG ships with a TRRS to TRRS cable, but it'll detect what device you're plugging it into and automatically adjust its output for that device. So you can plug it directly into your camera and it will work, but you can also plug it directly into your phone's headphone jack without swapping out the cable, and you can use it as an external microphone for your phone without requiring one of those TRS to TRRS adapter cables. And just out of curiosity, I replaced the stock TRRS cable with a more common TRS to TRS cable and plugged it into my camera, and it works as well. So no worries there, the VideoMic NTG is compatible with both standards if you ever need to replace the cable. And if you are familiar with Rode's VideoMic Pro Plus, there are some familiar settings that you'll be able to find on the VideoMic NTG as well. You've got your two stages of low-cut filters, that's pretty standard stuff. You've got your high-frequency boost, minus 20 dB pad when things get loud, and the super useful safety channel, which records a padded minus 20 dB signal into the right channel, so in case the standard volume signal clips on the left channel, you still have the softer right channel as a backup. It was one of the best and most helpful features on the Pro Plus, and I'm just super glad to have it on the VideoMic NTG. And that last light there, I got excited for a moment because I thought they put in a limiter, but turns out it's a peak indicator that lights up to let you know that your signal's clipping. Initially, I was also curiously wondering why would there be a minus 20 dB pad if there was already a volume gain knob? 
Turns out, even if you have your volume knob turned down, it is still possible to clip your signal because in this case, the volume knob is more like a fader and the minus 20 dB pad is applied pre-fader. In other words, if you do not apply the pad and the signal clips, by turning down the volume knob, you're only reducing the amplitude of an already clipped signal. So even though the signal becomes lower, it is still distorted. So I actually leave my minus 20 dB pad on quite often because it in a sense does increase the dynamic range of the microphone. And if you've seen Rhodes marketing material for the video mic NTG, you'll see that it's mentioned everywhere that this is like the most versatile video mic ever. And I actually don't disagree with that. This is a piece of tech that is jam-packed with features that do indeed make it a microphone that can be utilized for various use cases, especially considering that it can double as a USB mic as well. There's a USB Type-C port on the side of the mic that you use for charging the internal battery, but you can also use that port to hook up the mic to your computer as an audio device. This really does add a lot of value to the mic, especially if you do not have an audio interface. This would be a really cost-effective and convenient way to get recordings done on your PC. When it's connected to a computer, the output port becomes a headphone jack and that knob on the back becomes an output volume control and you set the mic gain digitally in software. So to kind of give you an idea of what the video mic NTG can sound like when you use it like that for something like a podcast or as a studio microphone, I'm going to move the mic right up against my mouth like I'm recording a voiceover and talk about our sponsor's Storyblocks video. Now, licensing stock footage can be very useful and save you a lot of time, but usually it's just super expensive and most of the time it gets built per clip. But for Storyblocks video, you can simply subscribe to the unlimited video plan for a relatively low cost and it's exactly what it sounds like. You get unlimited downloads for anything in the video member library and you can use them anywhere you like, including YouTube. The clips are studio quality and some are even up to 4K and they are really easy to search through and download. Plus, there's even some After Effects and Apple Motion templates in there. Check out the link in the description to learn more about Storyblocks video. Alright, so back on the topic of the VideoMic NTG being very versatile, another possible off-camera use case for the VideoMic NTG is using it as a boom mic, sort of like right now. For this, there is a 3 8 inch thread on the base of the shock mount, which means you should be able to just attach it to most boom poles and you already have a shock mounted microphone. So right now I'm actually standing beside one of my least favorite roads to drive on. The traffic's actually quite light this evening, but it also makes it a pretty good spot to test the off-axis rejection of the video mic NTG. So right now it's pointed towards me and kind of away from the road, so it should be getting a strong dialogue from my voice. But if I point it more towards the road and if I move off-axis, If I point it back towards me and sort of more away from the road, you should be getting a lot less of that traffic noise muddling up my dialogue and my voice should sound much clearer. And this should also be good to give you a general idea of what this mic sounds like outdoors. There's also a bit of a breeze blowing in, so you might be able to see how effective that foam windshield is. But yeah, Road Video Mic NTG beside a busy highway this is pretty much as outdoorsy as it gets. All right, I would like to get into price points for a moment as well. The Rode VideoMic NTG is priced at $249, which is significantly more expensive than its competitor, the DD D3 Pro, which is priced at $169. But for that increase in price, it's also got more features to offer than the D3 Pro. So in this case, I actually think it's priced quite proportionally. What got me by surprise was the fact that the VideoMic NTG was priced similarly to the VideoMic Pro Plus. I was totally expecting to see it being priced slightly above the Pro Plus when they announced it, but I guess it's good news that that didn't happen. I also thought that I would compare the video mic NTG to the Rode NTG5 just for the sake of it because these two mics looked so similar, but they actually sound rather similar as well. So just to clear things up, this one here with the red shock mount is the video mic NTG and this other one here is the NTG5. In fact, they look so similar that it's really hard to tell them apart if you don't see the full body of the microphone. But the video mic NTG sounding so close to the NTG5 was a pleasant surprise given that the NTG5 is a $500 microphone which is double the price of the video mic NTG so I think it's quite remarkable that the video mic NTG can hold itself up against the mic positioned higher up in the professional range. There is also one concern about this mic that many reviewers have already brought up and that's how the built-in battery in the video mic NTG is not user replaceable and that's a concern because it's no secret that lithium-ion batteries have a limited lifetime. But then the same issue can be mentioned for a lot of products from many manufacturers that make products with built-in batteries, but if Rode made it similar to what they did with the VideoMic Pro Plus, 
which was a removable, rechargeable lithium-ion battery, I think it would have been one less regret for the VideoMic NTG. The mic also does not ship with a lot of accessories. At some point, I really wish that the mic came with something like a carrying case, and it also would have been nice if they included that little tripod for using the mic on the desk as well. But that being said, the VideoMic NTG is this on-camera microphone accessory that's evolved beyond being just a mic attachment that's meant to live on the camera. But speaking for the on-camera class of microphones, I do think that this is pretty much the best one yet. And I would even go as far as saying that it's close to being perfect, there's just very little to not like about it. So that's my review of the new Rode VideoMic NTG. If you found today's review helpful, do consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon for more videos just like this, and I will see you in the next video. But until then, here's another video of mine YouTube thinks you should watch, or if you don't like computers telling you what to watch, here's one of my latest videos.